I'm Dump Truck DS. Welcome to Mapping for Quake with Trench Broom. Liquids in Quake seem pretty straightforward. You make a brush, slap a texture on it, and you're finished, right? Not so fast. There are a few things you may not have realized about liquids. I'm going to go through these quickly, but later I'll cover some features mappers can use with liquid brushes. All the files I mention are linked below. The first thing to remember is that liquids will not seal a map. If you use a liquid on the outside perimeter of your map, you'll cause a leak and Viz will not run. So make sure and use other brushes like a container for the liquid. Liquid brushes can stick out into the void or into other brushes if necessary. A good practice is to use skip textures on every face of your brush that is not seen by the player. Here's an example. The water texture on top and water skip everywhere else. In Trench Broom, shift double click on the brush to select all the faces. Then control shift click on the top brush to deselect that face. Now click on the water skip texture to apply this to every face except for the top. You don't want your water textures looking like this when the player's inside. This is a pet peeve of mine in older maps. Using skip textures is the easiest way to avoid this. There's also lava skip and slime skip. Use water skip on teleporters. One useful console command to make your water look a little better is R underscore old water zero. With old water set to one, you can get some ugly seams on the face of the brush, so set this to your preference. Monsters cannot see through water volumes, no matter what the opacity. If you put a monster in the water, they can't see the player until the player enters that volume or attacks. Monsters aren't damaged by water, slime, or lava, but there's a simple trick you can use to change that. I'll show you that later. The teleport texture behaves like water and causes the player to make splashing and swimming sounds. Mm. You should avoid letting the player enter a teleporter brush by putting the teleport trigger in front of the brush. The bio suit and armor will slow down the effects of lava slightly, but not by much. The pentagram is a better option if you want the player to take a dip in the lava. Liquids can be suspended above the player, but they can't move unless you use a mod. More on that later. Liquids don't have a current. You either sink or swim. But you could fake a current with a trigger push. But the push will make the wind sound, and there's no way to get rid of that without using a mod. When you need liquid to surround a passageway or some other brush, you'll need to build the brushes around the other structures in sections like I did for this mini teleporter. So let's get to the features for mappers I mentioned earlier. First off, this part of the tutorial assumes you are using a modern source port and not the original Quake engine that came with your game. I recommend Mark V version 1099 or above. And Quake Spasm is always a great option, version 0931 or above. I'm also assuming you're using Eric W's tools to compile your map. You really should use Eric W's tools. They have a lot of bug fixes and modern features. So load up a map with liquids in it and type in these different commands and hit enter to see the current values. R underscore water alpha, R slime alpha, R lava alpha, R tele alpha. You can change the opacity of each of these values independently in most modern Quake engines. So for example, if you want transparent slime, use a value of 0.7 or 0.5. Same with water. I prefer to have my lava completely opaque, which is 1, and the same for teleporter alpha. Even better, you can force the specific settings you prefer in your maps. When your map loads, these settings will take effect and they'll return to their defaults when the player loads a different map. Just add these commands without the R to your world spawn entity. Take a look at the tutorial map below to see the settings I used. This is really useful if you want to have some gameplay elements underwater or in slime. For example, a key deep underwater or a power-up that will cost some health to acquire. Here's how to damage monsters who fall in lava or slime. Put a trigger hurt brush towards the bottom of the volume. In this case, I have two. One that causes a little damage so the monster reacts when going in, and a second with a thousand points of damage to jib the monster. This will jib players as well. You may want to have a lesser amount of damage in slime volumes to be consistent with the game's logic. Now about that mod I mentioned earlier that had some interesting water features. It's called Extras R4. It's a bit on the older side and it has some bugs, but if you want to play around with it, I have it linked below. 
It includes documentation and sample maps highlighting all the features. There are water currents, water trains, and water volumes that can raise and lower. Not all the opacity features I mentioned earlier work in this mod, so use at your own risk. Alright, that's it for liquids. Thanks for hanging in there. We'll see you in the next tutorial.